Um, well, about two and a half years ago, we came here, and um, I wasn't sure really what I wanted to grow. So, thinking that I, if the worst comes to the worst and it doesn't work, um, if I make a list of stuff that I'd like to grow, I'd like to eat, um, it'll be more fun, uh, more chance of working because you'd have the energy to do it and stuff. So, I, I made a list of um, food that I like to eat, and it kind of fell into two groups really. One was the um, the sorts of food that we've forgotten about, so mulberries and medlars and quince, but also stuff that was quite marginal for England. Um, things like pecans and some of the nut crops. So I started to look into those, really. Um, and the more I did, the more the more I could see that with climate change coming, there was an opportunity. They were less marginal um, than perhaps they had been, but also that there were things coming the other way that would make them possible. So if I looked for the right things, like almonds that would... Um, that would flower a little bit later, so new varieties that would do that for me. It meant that um, with the last frost coming a little bit earlier in the year, they'd have, they'd have a chance of working. It was really just seeing where that balance was. So um, that's that's really what started it off. And then um, the more I've looked into it, the more I could see that there were possibilities for other things, and that a lot of the impacts of um, a lot of the effects of climate change, we were starting to experience maybe a little bit ahead of when um, they were predicted. So that's really how it got going. When did you realise climate change would affect the farm? Did you have any prior experience of climate change? My kind of background before doing this was in um, sort of environmental consultancy, so it's always been in, in, the, in, the, in the background or one of those things that relates to what I've done. But um, I think it, often if you, if you stay with data and information of that kind that doesn't relate exactly to what you do, um, you, get, you can get a little bit confused. And really, I, I, the more I looked into it and did research, the more I could see that there were people growing um, and experimenting with, with maybe not commercial scale crops or small commercial scale crops but twos and threes and trying new varieties of things that, that really made me see that they were being grown actually. People were trying two or three um, almonds within a sort of an experimental place uh, and, it, and that's really, you could see that these things weren't struggling, they were doing well and that really maybe the balance had started to tip So, um, and on top of that we've had two years here now and you know, you see things growing away perfectly merrily in the winter when they, you maybe they wouldn't. You know, like the almonds that we planted two years ago, they've got leaves all the way through the winter now. Right. And did you see climate change as an opportunity or as a challenge? Mm -hmm. I think um, it, if you start off in your head with a kind of really rigid view of what you're going to do, come whatever, you don't spot either. You know, you, you, you try and, and, and sort of... Um, drive through whatever's actually around. I think you've got to come at it the other way. I mean, we've only got 17 acres here, which is ridiculously small when it comes to anything growing-wise, farming-wise or anything, but y you have to look at your opportunities, um, any constraints, and work within them, you know? And I think mm -hmm. you can always look to, um, to, to take advantage of your apparently, you know, disadvantaged areas. So here we're growing things like medlars and quince, um, in areas that are, that are damp because they do perfectly well there so you wouldn't be able to do a whole lot with it. You see. When did you decide to market it as a climate change farm? Uh, well, <laughs> I'd love to say it was a kind of um, you know a, a moment of genius on my part but really it, it wasn't so much like that. After a, after a while, after we planted almonds and then we moved on to apricots, it started to, you could see that's where the interest was and it was because people were coming that they were interested, you know, about maybe if we, when we were going to get an almond crop, they suddenly would find out that we were doing quince and medlars and mulberries and all these things that were um, forgotten fruits of England, you know. And, but the, in fact, the, the, the almonds were selling all the other stuff that wasn't climate changing. Um, and after a while, you know, you, 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 and because it was one of the areas that I was exploring, because I was looking for a niche as well, and because it interested me, um, it, it became much more dominant. So now most of what we do is is stuff that hasn't been grown in England before. And it's backed up by this kind of broader range of things that used to be popular in England. So, um, and again, but again, I feel that's part of the climate change thing. You know, to to look at the unpredictability and take advantage of it. You know, year to year by having a, a broader range of crops um, that you would say maybe 12 out of 15 of them would do well in any given year. But maybe that 12 would vary depending on whether it was a hot, dry summer or a wet one or whatever. So. Um, it's really looking at it that way. The whole driver now is, is that climate change is going to change our whole conditions here. So um, try to take advantage of that. <laughs> Why is what you're doing important? Um, well, I think with, with um, climate change is kind of focused on, um, on, on mitigation of its impacts and all this kind of thing, rather than really trying to um, see what we can do positively. You know? I, think, I think that's, um, that's one of the things that's come from 
from here as a kind of a, a, a good message about climate change. You know, there are positives about it. But I think the, um, the main thing is if we're, to, if we're to really get hold of climate change and, the, the, you know, our contribution to it, is to, is to do what we already do slightly differently rather than maybe doing a whole load of new things. We're not particularly good at that as a, as a, as a species. And I think, um, you know, here we're trying to take advantage of climate change and the new conditions. But... Um, by doing so, we're making otherwise foreign food available to a local market. So it's such a reduction in food miles and, and, and it enables people to buy into a kind of lower carbon diet. And did you anticipate the interest in the climate change farm? Uh, no, no, not at all. I mean, it was. It, I, I thought if we produce something different, then you know, maybe we would have interest in it because of that. But, um, you know, a, a year ago, I'm walking up the field going, if it doesn't work, all the wasted money, wasted time and all of this, if it does work, how am I going to sell it? But it's been, um, you know, it's really snowballed, really. And, and it's only really then that you get to see the sort of power of it, I think. You know, that, that um, it, in one sense, it's 17 acres with, you know, a thousand odd trees and other th- crops and stuff that we're growing. Um, which is interesting in itself, but it's a kind of bigger thing now, and I think that's, um, that's, that's kind of become clearer. You know, there's been such a wide range of interest from all sorts of different people, um, and that really helps it move on to another level. It's not just about selling food. It's, a, it's about something else entirely as well, you know. What would your key messages be, given your experience over the last few years, to the agriculture community? I think, um, I think that there are far more opportunities there than perhaps are being perceived at the moment. I think... Um, in a, in, a, in a sector that is um, struggling in some ways that we've seen a lot of diversification in the past into things like recreation and tourism and, and, and so on and I think this, the, the possibilities that climate change have given farmers and growers uh, are, um, we're just starting to see them now and I think it, it, often you see farmers and growers moving into a, a completely different land based kind of um, industry but I think there, there is a possibility there to move into something more successful but that keeps those core skills and the things that, that people who do that enjoy so I think um, take hold of those I think there's a lot of opportunities there it's not just limitations and do you have also any sort of key messages to the, the wider business community yeah I mean I think um, I, I think firstly to remember that people are receptive to positive things that we can do about climate change so communicate simply and effectively what um, either employees or people who are investing in your business be they clients or whatever um, are actually benefiting from in some way through what you're doing as a business but uh, I mean one of the things I remember really clearly is even you know though it's a climate change farm and so on I was very slow or hesitant about communicating what I felt were some of the things that we were doing that were positive. I felt it would be boring or people weren't interested, which is a really long way from the truth. And I think there are some businesses that do the same. Simple communication of what you do and how, how people can make a difference themselves, I think, is very important. Don't be afraid of getting that out. Mm. Where would you like to see this going? Well, I think um, there are a lot of opportunities about where this could go in the future. I think there are... Um, the focus has to move away from the limitations. It's all about opportunities. There are people out there who are um, who are farming, who are growers, who've got experience and skills I don't have. And I think we can make that leap with them for a start. We're seen as somebody doing something new and very inventive and you know very pioneering. But there are people out there with all those skills who can take this on board and see that there are so many opportunities that come with climate change that pay climate change back by providing food that would um, otherwise be very high. Um, food miles but also I think um, there's the there's a leap to be made in terms of the market I think both here at Otter Farm but also anybody else starting to diversify into those things can make a leap with the customer we can start to communicate to the customer there is an opportunity to buy more environmentally sound food that that is more um, attuned with with the what we need to do about climate change so we're just giving people that option I think we can all help to stimulate that market I think that's something that we want to do you know from here thank you